I think I'm loud enough. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. My name is Jiayu Luo. I'm currently a PhD student from Professor Tutumas group at URUC. Uh, uh, my slides will have the title of Automated Railroad Bias Falling Conditions Action in Support of Course High, Deep Learning Based Algorithm and Automated Bias Scanning Vehicle Development. This is an FRA funded project. We have our principal investigator, Professor Tutumas. And we also have our co-principal investigators, Professor Huja, John Hart. Uh, we have our research scientist, Dr. Isam Kahai. And we have supportive FIA folks, Bill Thompson and Third Assessment. Uh, lastly, we have three research assistants who work on this project together, Jiayu Lomi, Klin Ding, and Hao Hong Huang. So, and last, I want to thank a uh, real group from RUC to support us so that we can conduct our field test and lab test in the uh, facility at Chernobyl. So let me get into our uh, slides. So first I will do the introduction and motivation. So uh, as we all know, uh, the ballast uh, serves as an essential component in the track substructure and it facilitates the drainage and provides structural support for track system. Mm, and here we have some common bias gradations. On the left, we have some recommended bias gradations from Arima, French, Queensland, and RIC. On the right, uh, we have some summarized 14 different sources of ballast used in US railroad industry. So back to our target, ballast. Uh, whenever you are working with ballast, you will always face the bias degradation issue because the ballast will progressively degrade by accumulating finer particles in voids. So whenever that happens, the performance of the ballast will deteriorate a lot. So we need some inspection tool approach to kind of uh, give us some like uh, index about where and when the ballast condition is bad so that we can initiate the maintenance activities. So um, uh, in terms of the, like, the network level inspection, we have the ground penetrating radar GPR technique uh, which can give us high level like, idea about which area the ballast condition is probably not bad so that we can do some detailed inspection at that area. And for the detailed inspection, the project level inspection, we have the visual inspection uh, approach, which is kind of subjective. And also we have the laboratory SIP analysis, uh, which requires the field sampling. Uh, in addition, we can also do the image analysis towards those field uh, samples uh, we have developed the enhanced University of Illinois aggregate image analyzer here, uh, which can like scan each individual particle and provide some properties of each of them. Uh, and here, uh, this is kind of the uh, the computer vision technique that we use in our group uh, at the first place. But all of those like methods will require field sampling. So your question comes: Is field sampling a good approach for bias degradation degradation evaluation? Like uh, some of the previous studies, the Union Pacific Ballast Box study has shown that, like, as you guys can see on the right, uh, the percentage passing 3.8 is kind of fluctuating a lot among all the five boxes. This indicates that the representative field sampling from service track is really hard and almost unrealistic. So we really need some in-field on-site inspection approach, like long intrusive like approach, to kind of pair pass evaluate the balance condition. So here, the computer vision is the ideal approach because it's not intrusive to help us to evaluate the field balance condition. So what's, what's our human can see is just like a 2D color image. We are kind of easily to like inspect what's inside, but what computer says is kind of complicated. It's like the metrics of different values here, which is easy for us, but kind of hard for computers because it's ambiguous and there are many blended objects and there is intra-class variation. So those all bring hardness to computers. Here, I also want to introduce some uh, typical tasks in computer vision fields. The first is classification, like whether there is a balloon in this image or not. The second one is the semantic segmentation, uh, like where are all those like balloon pixels in this image. The third one is the object detection. Like where are those like uh, balloons objects inside of this image and like uh, what are their location? And the last one, which is considered the most complicated one is the instance segmentation task where we 
we not only need to localize, like find the location of each object, but also we need to extract the pixels that belong to each of the instance. So here is a, like a general trend about the uh, deep learning revolution in computer vision fields. As we can see, starting in 2015, uh, the computer uh, algorithm has kind of uh, bypassed uh, humans, which means that we kind of use computer algorithm to beat ourselves. So next, also with all those being said, the automated field, balanced field inspections of green needs. So within the scope of this FI project, uh, we, we are currently developing computer vision based technology to identify balanced degradation type and severity in an automated fashion. Uh, and also we will develop uh, to the corresponding hardware and soft software components to provide the deep learning based system for best condition quantification by imaging based degradation indices. Lastly, we will develop a regression model to link the uh, imaging based degradation indices IBDI to uh, the FI values, which is common used nowadays. So next, let me go into the proposed methodology section. So as a problem statement, like uh, what we really want to do is that how can we quickly and reliably quantify the level of balanced degradation level in the field? So this is something we really want to do in the field. So uh, here's like uh, the computer vision like application flowcharts we have. So at as the first stage, we will do the data collection. Uh, we will collect like images from different sources. We will kind of sort them, pick the good ones, and then label them and prepare our database. And then we will try to design our own model. We will find kind of some of the state of the art design ideas and kind of customize them based on our requirements. And then we will train the implemented model with the established data set from the stage one. And lastly, with the well-trained model, we will conduct the image segmentation task and do the results analysis. So here is our final proposed method here. So this image shows our prototype of the balance scanning vehicle. We will deploy it at the target balance section, and then we will utilize several balance scanning devices to, to collect uh, the required images. And then we will run our deep learning uh, models to segments out like the, uh, the uh, collected image. And at the same time, we will also want to uh, get like the depth profile of the uh, section and different depths so that it can help us better understand and evaluate the falling condition and the spots. Uh, and so our platform will try to kind of capture like a long scan of the track section so that we can have like a continuous results for the whole track section about the falling condition. And as the last step, we will do the post-processing uh, step to finally calculates the uh, falling condition estimates. That's kind of our proposed idea here. So next, I will introduce uh, our automated scanning vehicle development here. So during the design phase, uh, we're trying to make sure that the whole, uh, the whole vehicle is kind of highly modularized, which means that the vehicle is kind of easy to be expanded, to be upgraded for any future research. Uh, basically, we have three different modules here. We have the data acquisition module, which contains all the sensors like the line scan camera, error scan camera, and 3D scanner. And also we have an encoder system, which will provide the required signals to trigger the line scan camera and 3D scanner. And it will, will also help us to track the speed of the uh, BSV balance scanning vehicle. Second, we have the control module, which contains the computer and GPS. Uh, lastly, we have the proportion module, which contains the motor, wheels, axles, ba uh, battery, etc. So now we have this, uh, our like automated balance scanning vehicle prototype here. And uh, next, I will show several views of the constructed one. So this is like the kind of the back view of the uh, uh, BSV. This is kind of like the side view. And those two are kind of uh, like the top views from different angles. So we have successfully constructed this and it can help us to kind of, to prepare like a long scan of the track sections at the, uh, like at the target's uh, location. So here is a close view of our developed develop platform. 
I will introduce each component one by one. So first we have the top view scan arms, which will help us to hand the uh, camera devices to scan the shoulder as well as the crib. Next, we have the cut section scan arm, which will help us to do the cut section scanning. Uh, and then we have the camera uh, cameras, which will help us to acquire all the required images. And last, we, oh, then we have the control module, proportion module, and we have like a reserve space for sampling. Like we can bring back some like field samples to our lab to do some uh, future like test. So I will go through uh, each of the modules like one by one quickly. So we have the data acquisition module. We have two removable posts where we can kind of uh, change the configuration of it. Like we can rotate it 90 degrees so that we can scan not only the bad shoulder, but also the crepe. And then we have three straight arms. Each of them are nine feet long because we want, we really want to extend out to the bad shoulder and cut section to do the scanning. Uh, but, uh, and we also kind of design them so that they can break into uh, three individual components so that each individual component is less than six feet. Next, we have one angled arm, which uh, like, uh, as you can see, like at the end of the angled arm, the vertical arm can be like uh, placed, like slide up and down to let us find the optimal location for the cameras to scan the cut sections. And then we have four mounting enclosures for the cameras and accessories. We have customized mounting place to directly mount the uh, camera devices to the arms. Last, we have the encode, uh, encoder system, which will like rotate together with the uh, like the BSV and provides the trigger signals to the camera and also track the speed. As we can see, this is the wheel encoder we used, uh, which is directly attached to the frame of the BSV. It, it will directly contact the real surface and rotate together with the BSV when we are operating the uh, vehicle. Mm, as a summary, we have like three scanning configurations. We can do the shoulder scanning, we can do the cut section scanning, and also we can do the battle script scanning as well. Uh, yes, and next will be the control. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, next one will be the control module. The main part will be the detachable box, uh, which protects and integrates all the different devices. It contains like a heat sink system for cooling. Mm, those are the four major components inside of our control module. We have the rock industrial computer, which will collect and store the field da data, and it will control the whole like a uh, BS space. So it's like the brain of the uh, vehicle. And then we have the GPS device, we have the power source, uh, and also we have the sound read for monitor and keyboards to kind of uh, take user input. Yeah. Uh, the last module is a proportion module. So we have the motor here, uh, which will provide the, the horsepower. And we have the chain system, which will convert the motor rotation rate to achieve the desired speed. Mm. Next, we have the deep cycle battery, which will provide the power to each of the components. Uh, lastly, we have a control panel. Uh, we have several buttons on this, uh, one speed adjustable knob, one direction switch, one e-stop button, and one speed display. Uh, one note here is that we kind of enable the remote control of the whole system so that we can remotely start and stop the platforms from the safety perspective. Yeah. Mm, so here I want to introduce our lab, our field test. Uh, so uh, thank the uh, thank the uh, real group from USL game so that we can use their like outdoor track in Seoul. Uh, so and also we cut kind of a small vertical balance cut section to simulate what will happen during the uh, balance shoulder cleaning activities. Uh, this slide shows how we uh, set up the error scan camera on the left and on the right we have the, some collected sample images from top and from the cut section. Next, we have the uh, how we set up the line scan camera images, or uh, how we set up the line scan camera, I'm sorry, in the field, and what are those like collected images. So uh, here we are showing a kind of a video here because the line scan camera is kind of a long scan of the whole track. 
So we just do an image of this to show like what the whole like strip will look like. And then we have the 3D scanner, which will provides the uh, like height map of the target section. Uh, so as you as you guys can see on the left, we have the like detailed height height map of the like the cross ties and also the ballast. And on the right hand side, we can clear get the slope information of the ballast shoulder. So that's kind of the uh, development of the vehicle. And then we're going to the algorithm development. So as a first stage, always for deep learning uh, algorithm, we will always uh, prepare our task specific database. So we will try to collect the lab and field images from different sources. And we will try to manu manually label them to provide the ground truth information for the model to train. And and then we need to select our base model to conduct the image segmentation task. So we select mask RDNN as our base model, which is a very kind of uh, advanced instance segmentation algorithm proposed by Facebook AI research fair, and it's very powerful, as you guys can see. Mm, and then we have the uh, implementing model, we have the established database, and then we will do the model training so that we can have like a well-trained model to conduct the instant segmentation task. Uh, and uh, here uh, I will show some like results from our model. I, uh, I'm trying to like uh, get some images from different like conditions, like from fields, from lab, uh, faults or clean. So let us go through each of them. So this is the lab re-engineered balance image at UIUC. Yeah, uh, this is a quite clean one. So the algorithm will just pick all the like uh, like ballast particles and ignore the background. Uh, this is a fault ballast image from BNSF track. Uh, this is a quite fault one. So all the fault area are kind of ignored by the algorithm, but the algorithm still kind of picks up all the individual like uh, ballast particles in this image. This one is a fault ballast image from TTCHTL track. Uh, this is also a quite like fault one, uh, like the algorithm will only pick up the ballast particles inside of this image and kind of ignore it, like the, the fault area. That's what we really want. Mm. So we, we also like capture some like uh, line scan image as our like, uh, like at the outdoor track we use as so uh, actually like this, uh, this Tuesday actually. and. Uh, because th this is a really clean, like top view of the ballast surface. So the algorithm will try to predict all the kind of individual particles uh, on top of the surface. And we also collect some error scan camera images last Friday at so, uh, the same like The same conclusion here is that the model is trying to predict all the, like, like all the ballast particles on top of the surface. So those results kind of show that uh, we have developed like a kind of a competitive kind of a segmentation kernel to handle the images from different conditions, from lab, from uh, fields, from like uh, probably four or probably clean. Yeah. So, and with the segmentation kernel, we can do some uh, post-processing to calculate the percent degraded segments, uh, PDS. So PDS is defined in terms of the image segments, like all the segments from the segmented results, uh, which has like size between three eight and three, will be treated as ballast particles. All the rest segments will be treated as fault errors. So this goal has been proven to provide a reliable falling condition evaluation without the need for ballast sampling and safe analysis, which is very ideal because we want to avoid the bad sampling so that we can have the most accurate results just in the field. So this is, this is a preliminary results we have uh, to build a regression model for to link the uh, PDS with the FI. So two notes here. Uh, first, like the whole procedure that we use to analysis the ballast is user independent, which means that we don't require the user to input any information. And the second one is that uh, probably by enlarging the database or by improving the model architecture, it's very likely that us will 
value will be like increased. So the last one will be some like potential improvement directions. So the first one is about the model architecture improvement. So this, the point rain is kind of uh, the point rendering idea, which is a follow up work of Maskasen from there. So it's kind of improves the image segmentation quality, especially near the boundary location. Uh, it's it's relatively apply adaptive subdivision to render higher resolution feature map until it reaches like the desired results. As we can see on the right, uh, we have the kind of the current model results and the improved version. Uh, as like zoom in here, we the improved model does like have better like boundary detection. And the next one is the vision transformer based model refinement idea. So the vision transformer is a very hot topic back in 2021. And we use the vision transformer use shifted windows backbone swing transformer. Uh, and this is proposed by the Microsoft Research Asia back in 2021 It's the best paper awarded in ICCV. So uh, it's kind of outperforms all the existing frameworks for the instance segmentation task. And it's definitely in the state of the art framework and our group will try this in the future, kind of bring that into ours, uh, into the scope of this project. And the last one, so uh, as we all know that we will collect whole bunch, like thousands of balanced images from the fields uh, because the labeling is kind of time consuming and expensive. We cannot label all of those images uh, because of the uh, the limitations. So uh, we really, and like the previous developed mask assay framework can only work on labeled images. So how do we, like how can we utilize those unlabeled ones? So there are some like supervised learning approach uh, that can help us to boost the performance of the model. So here we kind of want to use the contrastive learning framework to kind of uh, let enforce the model to learn some high level representative of the unlabeled data set. So as the general framework shown here, we have the original image. We will apply some augment data augmentation techniques to the image, like change the temperature, uh, re uh, resize crop rotation. And then we, we will kind of pair the original image with the augmented positive images. And we will try to enforce the model. We will tell the model that those two images should have similar feature map. With this kind of constraints, we can enforce and like to push the model to learn like some different uh, high level feature maps from the unlabeled uh, images. So it's more like what we did as like uh, uh, like since that they were were born. Like we can see like uh, we don't really understand what are those objects, but we can understand those objects are are like similar to each other. Those two objects probably are different. That's kind of the idea about the contrastive learning here. And then 3, 3D approach. So all the previous information are about 2D. So 2D is kind of li limited because it's only two dimensional, right? But if we can have the 3D information, which can provide us with some very precise information about like the geometry, uh, we, have, we believe that this can provide us with more precise like uh, results compared to, 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 to the approach. And uh, we all know that 3D segmentation algorithm has been su successfully applied to many different fields. So uh, we will also move into this direction eventually. And the last idea is for the synthetic data. So uh, as we previously mentioned, the labeling and annotation will be always time consuming and expensive. We want to kind of uh, avoid that one. So we have the uh, contrastive learning approach to uh, utilize the unlabeled data, but we can also use this approach. Like we will utilize some uh, game engine or basic engine like Unreal to kind of generate the fake images under realistic conditions with 100% accurate ground truth labels. And also we can have as many as of them because they're just generated by a program. So this can definitely increase the uh, quality of our established database. So with all those like being said, so we, we have constructed the platform. We have develop, uh, developed a, a segmentation algorithm. So we are ready to collaborate with any real partners. So uh, we will basically go
go to the degraded balance zones. We will deploy our automated balance scanning vehicle there, and we will do the kind of the long track like section scanning, and we can collect all those images, and we will do the image analysis, and we will provide the final like outputs, the PDS value. And, but at the same time, so this can be done by our group individually, but at the same time, we can collaborate with any existing shoulder like uh, machine, like the shoulder balance cleaners from Loram. We can definitely collaborate with them. Uh, so basically what we will do is that we will go to their working elder. We will kind of uh, ask them to help us create some like step profile like this. We'll do the scanning. We will create the kind of the long scans of all those kind of uh, section. And then we'll do the data analysis. And finally, we can get the depth profile, which can help us better understand the kind of the falling on, uh, condition and evaluate the uh, degradation level. So we have some upcoming work with Loram this summer. So stay tuned. Probably we'll have some good news. Uh, I want to like express my thanks to all our uh, like sponsors, especially FRA for funding our project. Yeah, that's pretty much my uh, slide. Uh, thank you so much. Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it just because y'all are having to operate it? Is it going so slow, or is that the reason why they cut the speed? Is that the reason why they got bad at mm -hmm. uh, That's a good question. Uh, thank you. So first, for the 1.6 speed, I think there are two major reasons for picking that one. The first is at our current stage. Uh, we want to have some very like high re resolution image as our input, so that we are kind of like reduce the speed uh, in our minds. And the second reason for this is uh, because uh, we want somehow like sometime we want to collaborate with the uh, uh, balanced shoulder cleaning activities for their machine. Like their operate operating speed is 1.6 mile per, per hour. So that's why. That's kind of the reasons why we pick this at like our scanning speed. Uh, but I think now our platform can speed up to two miles per hour, probably. <laughs> okay, thank you. Please. Oh, thank you for the question. So uh, the wide angle uh, yeah. like camera will have one big short of advantage in our perspective because it will have some very like kind of big uh, image distortion because we are looking it's not directly from the top of the ballast right we're looking from like a side with some like a large angle so uh, we will kind of uh, ignore the like the boundaries of those like ballast particles which will provide some hard time to our developed algorithms. I think that's the reason why we want to extend our arms out and try to scan from the top of the target section. Thank you. Thank you.